Welcome back guys. Now we'll be looking at the mechanism of inner ear. Okay. So inner ear. Let's say this is the oval window. This is the round window. And instead of drawing the whole coil of the cochlea, which apparently is like this. I'll just show you in this form. So imagine this is the whole coil of the cochlea. Okay. Uh, little bit of anatomy. So I hope it's not much. So there's the oval window, then there's the round window. Then you have the cochlea, which protrudes like an apex. It's divided into three parts. So you have the scala vestibuli, the scala media, and the scala tympani. The one in the center is scala media. This is the oval window, this is the round window, and this will be the basilar membrane. This is the basilar membrane. So this one will be will be the resinous membrane and there will be a tectoral membrane somewhere here but we'll take that up when we discuss the organ of corti. Yeah. This will be the scala vestibuli and this will be the scala tympani. This will be the helicotrema. What's all important? I'll cover it up. You don't need to worry about all the peripheral organs which we don't need. Now, there will be vibrations set up at the oval window and it does not travel the entire way. Maybe some low frequency vibrations travel till the apex. So low frequency will travel till the apex, but not all. What they do is they transmit directly to the round window. And because of this vibrations, which are going like this, see if you can see that I, I'll draw again with. Yeah. So it came like this. And here you can see that the motion is left to right, left to right, left to right and the curve up and down, up and down and the exit. Now, because of this vibration, there is a shearing force. Okay. What's a shearing force? Shearing. Imagine there are two parallel surfaces. If one force is acting on one direction and the other force is acting in the exact opposite direction, this is what we call a shearing force. It leads to bending. Okay, so this object will invariably in the end become a parallelogram. Now, that's what's happening here. The vibrations are working in a shearing manner. See, here the vibration is going this side. I'll change the color. Here it's going this side. Here it's going this side. So there's a strain, and there are hair cells present here. Okay, to actually look at the hair cells, we'll draw the organ of corti. Organ of corti. It's a pretty simple diagram. If you have been having problem regarding this, it's easy, it's simplified. There is a basilar membrane. Then there are a few supporting cells on which outer hair cells will be resting. Okay. Then mostly there are three to five in number rows. And then we have inner hair cell which will also be resting on a supporting cell and then there will be nerve fibers from all these cells we'll draw it in and lower it okay there will be nerve fibers from all these cells which combine to form the auditory nerve okay, this becomes the auditory nerve now the outer hair cells on top of them there will be tectorial membrane the outer hair cells are embedded into the tectorial membrane not the inner hair cells and there are some other cells called the supporting pillars of corti which are responsible for the formation of tunnels now all of this is occurring where all of this is occurring inside the scala media okay this is the stria vascularis that's the scala media now if i minimize zoom out of this what we'll be seeing is this will be the basilar membrane this will be the organ of corti this will be the scala media the stria vascularis scala vestibuli scala tympani scala media this much will be your organ of corti okay as i said the cochlea is a tube like structure okay so if i were to take a cut section here this is what i would be seeing at that cut section, I would be seeing a circle out of which it would be like this scala media vestibuli scala tympani. 
and in this a small part would be the organ of corti which we saw here it's pretty simple so when there's a shearing strain there is movement of the hair cells movement of hair cells so depending on the orientation it is sensed since they're attached the vibrations in the hair cells is sensed sent by the auditory nerve that's it that's how it works that's the mechanical event but we then have to look at the biochemical events biochemical events pretty simple okay when there's acting of a shearing force we have shearing force shearing force leads to mechanical opening uh, you might not know but there's a diagramic ganong i think you'll love it okay there is a channel here it is attached by a protein of some sort i don't remember exactly it's like this okay again this is also closed they're closed when they tip okay when there's a vibration when there's a shearing force applied when they tip this length is fixed so this leads to the expansion of this so they're pulled apart by this spring like thing okay now both of them are open okay since they tipped now the distance between them has increased okay and since the distance between them has increased they which were closed these gates which were closed are now open and now they are allowing in potassium so that leads to the depolarization why potassium because in the organ of corti the scala vestibular and the scala tympani have almost near ecf concentration so you have sodium at 125 to 140 125 to 140 and you have potassium at somewhere around 3 to 5 but the scala media is reversed you have potassium at 150 and you have sodium at 4 to 5 so if a depolarization has to occur at the organ of corti it's potassium influx which we are going to be seeing now we have shearing force we have k plus influx which leads to depolarization but then again you should know that it's only happening at the top part so when the depolarization reaches the lower part there will be influx of calcium at the lower part at the lower part now what does calcium influx lead to it leads to release of neurotransmitters release of neurotransmitters now the release of neurotransmitters especially here is glutamate now glutamate will be released and it will travel past the synaptic cleft onto the auditory nerve. Now, who's releasing the glutamate then? The hair cells. And they will stimulate the auditory nerve, which will lead to its depolarization. And that's how it's conducted. So, the neural, uh, how the pathway works, we'll see it in the next one. And finally, we'll look at the electric responses and the theories of hearing. And we'll finish it off in two more videos. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.